<laughs> Woo! Wow! Woo! Wow! There's a fountain inside of me and it's springing up. <laughs> I'm getting hit with the oil and the wine. And I asked the Lord one time, I said, why in the middle of my preaching do you just kind of show up and I just start laughing? The Holy Spirit said, it's a witness that I really like what you're saying because most of the church has no room for me. And when they say, come Holy Spirit, come, and I come, they make no room for me. They grieve and quench. There's just no room for me to do what I want to do because you already know what you're doing. And the Holy Spirit said to me one time, take this for your theology. We, we know it, but really take it. The Holy Spirit said to me, I like you. I mean, I don't need you, but I like you because you make room for me to have liberty. You just get up and move without any agenda. I'm attracted to you. The favor of God means attracted. The pleasure of God, the delight of God is attracted to you. That's favor. The blessing of the Lord shall overtake you. I mean, the favor of God. There are things about David that God liked. And God loved Jacob above Esau. God loved Joseph amongst his all. Listen, there are people that God just really, I mean, all of us, but there is something, and I wanted to find the something. I said, God, I want to find the something that, that draws you, the something that brings revival, the something, because, you know, everything about me is broken, wounded, ugly, in the natural. I'm not talking about appearance. I know I'm handsome. I'm talking about without Christ, how destitute. And I want to do something here before I just kind of move into the second part of my testimony. And Lord willing, I may just even get a little deeper tomorrow night. But I do want to pray for everybody tonight for a baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. And we're going to minister healing and everything. But my wife's going to come up in a moment. What she got to understand, my wife never gets up. And I just told her I would just take one minute to kind of just help what's going to happen. If you're watching, this is, this is great. Jessa Bentley is going to come. And I just want to say this. After two and a half years of revival and revival in South Africa and spent about 80% of our time and schedule all over the world I just hit a wall. And this happened last September. I just kind of hit a wall. And I've been there before. Burned out, discouraged, disappointed, depressed. And I just start realizing when you get in that place, unresolved issues in your character, cracks in your foundation, things can start coming up. The old man, the old nature, the way you used to think and do stuff. If you're maturing up as a believer, you just deal with that. But, you know, there are times, if you got honest about it, it's, it, it's Jesus is always winning, but have you ever felt like, man, I, I really didn't win? It doesn't have to be a public thing. It's even just a, in, in the privacy of your own life and your walk with God. And I started to go through that burnout and that depression, and you make decisions that you don't want to make. You get under pressures. And I realized, God, I've got to deal with some, I need some healing in my heart because I want to be in this for the long run. I, I'm going after something and, and I'm, I, I recognize some of the signs. And so I started communicating to my wife. My wife said, I got to be honest, I'm burning out. I'm dealing with depression. And you come out of the high of revival, like we had a move of God in South Africa, and you come back to America and it just doesn't happen the same and, and that disappointment, and sometimes you don't even know it's coming. Disappointment is, have you ever been high and then really low? 
Like just that moment where you really expect, and then it's just over. And my wife was maybe even more than me, just depressed and tired. And I said, well, you know, we're going we're gonna to take a sabbatical. I need to take a sabbatical. My health, I had some health challenges. And I really wanted to go deeper in the Lord and, and, and just allow the Holy Spirit to heal in me any resolved issues. And, and, and I, I mean, I said, God, I'm going to deal with these sin issues in my life, these, these things that, that happened in private. I'm going to deal with them. I'm going to go real deep. And it was like every few years, God wants to bring another layer. And I, went, I even went to counseling and therapy for six months. Six months. I said, God, I'm not even crazy, and I'm going to therapy to really just make sure anything is, that's unresolved in my life is done. And after six months, you know, I came back and started preaching again. But when you're not preaching, there's no money. It was six months I never received one paycheck. No money. And, of course, the ministry that lives by faith and revival and offerings and had very little money. And my wife was in a real hard place after four months of trusting God with no money, and yet God did it. And she got an amazing testimony. Her story is so much greater than mine because I've had to believe God for millions of dollars. I've had to believe God for, I need $10,000. I've had to believe God, I need $100,000 tonight, God. One time I was preaching in Africa, I had 24 hours without $1 to raise a million dollars to feed 400,000 hungry people in Mozambique, Malawi, Africa. I was in a church of 300 people in New Jersey, and I said, I have no money and there's 300 people, and there was no television to reach. I said, I don't know how we're going to do it, but I need, three, I, I need 300 people to give a million dollars. 24 hours later, I had a million dollars in commitment, in pledges, and I mean, the whole thing happened. So this story for me, I, you know, was a real challenge because believing God for bread, believing God for gas, believing God for the bill, for the electric bill, and I'm running a multi-million dollar ministry. It was just, that even was more depression. Like your pride and everything you go through. So I'm going to have my wife. Can you just welcome Jessa Bentley tonight for a moment? Come here. And I'm going to ask my wife to share this testimony. If you're watching, it just, just this testimony is amazing of God's goodness and blessing because it really became real to you. And how God sustained us for six months. But this one story is such a true principle about the hundredfold. Just, just share it, babe. Um, not just the hundredfold, but just even, just even just like I felt like God really dealt with my heart um, in the area of trusting him, you know, because when you go through especially six months of not working and you're just depending on God, it's, it's challenging. So for me, it wasn't just the hundredfold, the money's coming in, it's like God really working in my heart to really, you know, trust in him. But um, it would, this would happen in January, and um, I remember waking up one morning, and I would went and checked the bank account. Now, the night before, I had $1,000 in the bank, and I was like, good, this is going to be perfect. I can, you know, pay some bills and, and do some stuff, and get groceries, and um, I'll be good. And so, well, the next morning I woke up, and I went and checked my bank account, and it was negative $25. So I, um, and what happened was uh, six months prior to that morning, we had sold $1,000 personally to uh, an evangelistic ministry that reaches millions, and they do crusades all over the world, and and we decided that we were going to give $1,000 for 1,000 souls. And that was six months. And we, we sowed in the offering. And, we, you know, we did the prayer. And we're like, we're going to get 1,000 souls in the name of Jesus. And we threw it into the, the offering bucket. Well, I'm not sure what happened, but they waited six whole months <laughs> to uh, cash that check. It was so convenient. <laughs> So, like I said, I woke up that morning, and I checked my bank account, and that ministry had processed the check, and now here I am at negative 25, and, and here's what I did, actually. Um, I hadn't told Todd yet, so 
I, I, do what, I do what most strong faith evangelist wives do. I uh, closed my eyes and I prayed and said, God, you are so mean to me. <laughs> I actually said that. You were so mean to me. And I started crying. And I was like, I sowed that thousand dollars and you promised and now I'm broke and I'm mad. You're mean. And, and then Todd comes in and he sees me crying. He said, what happened? So I told him the story and he was like, oh man. I said, they can't do that. They can't just take a check and wait six months and cash it because they feel like waiting that long. I, I said, I'm going to call them right now and I'm going to tell them to reverse the check. And Todd said, no, no, you're not. And uh, <laughs> said, no, I know what we're going to do. He said, grab my hand. So he, I grabbed his hand. He said, we're going to pray. And I was like, all right, fine. I'd rather call the ministry. And so he grabs my hand and he, he says, Lord, we intended this money for souls. And we're standing strong in that still today, even though we're negative 25. So I'm, he's praying this prayer and he's like, and I'm like, freaking mad, you know? So I'm trying to like get in faith and I'm like, yes, Lord, what Todd's saying. Yeah. Well, so whatever Todd's saying in Jesus name, but I'm, I'm like inside, I'm not happy. And so I said, Hey, let me, let me, let me try. Let me pray. I'm going to ask God for $330. I said, that's all I need today. I need $330 to pay a couple of bills, get gas and some groceries and some pet food. So I was like, all I need is $333. Yeah, $330. So I said, let me pray with you. I'm still mad though. So I'm like, Lord, can I have $330 to make it through this week? <laughs> You're still mean to me, but can I please have $330? And Todd's like, amen. So then um, within 24 hours of that prayer, I'm not even kidding, within 24 hours, I woke up the next morning and checked my bank account, and there was $3,330 in the account. I asked for 330 and I got 3330 And that, that really changed me. And then, then, okay. and then I changed my prayer to, God, you are so good to me. <laughs> Wow, come on. The evangelist, the faith evangelist wife. God, I need pet food. Can we just get so real? Gas, food, pet food. It gets that real, doesn't it? 300, I just need $330. And the goodness of God breaks through supernaturally. 3,300. I mean, I was saying, wow, you need to pray again, babe. Not only did God sustain us for six months, but when I came out of that six-month sabbatical, the ministry didn't have one dollar left. That was April 29th. God spoke to me, I want you to take that brand new building. Or that, you know that building? I want you to sign the contract. I said, God, I don't have a dollar. He said, I want you to say you're going to take the building. In 48 hours, you're going to sign the contract. I said, God, I don't have a dollar. I just came out of six months. My wife had to pray for $330. I don't have any meetings. And you want me to take that building? April 29th. I don't have any meetings. And I took the building in 48 hours. I said, I'll sign the building. My business manager said, you don't have any money. And I said, God's going to do it. We got the building 48 hours later. And I said, not only is God going to give me the money, we're going to get the building, but I'm going to raise everything for the television, the lights, the chairs, the sound, and in nine days, we're going to dedicate the building and bring a crowd of people from nothing to nine days later, furnished lights, sound, TV, and everything paid for by faith. I mean, I heard God. Tens of thousands of thousands start rolling in. Six months, I could barely get $3,000. And now tens of thousands. I said, God, what happened? He said, you dealt with your stuff. You humbled yourself. 